Extreme 3D Beetle on a Leaf Pendant Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a beetle on a leaf pendant and the actual leaf is just one, something that I purchased because I saw it and I absolutely fell in love with it. But I sculpted the little 3D beetle that sits on top of it and it is similar to my other 3D beetles that I have made in the past but each one is a little different, each beetle has its own personality. This one has an awesome rhinoceros horn on it which none of the other ones do so that's kind of a new element and I also switched up the way I did the legs. So I hope you guys like this one just as much as the others and if you missed them I will put links to them in the description box below so check those out and don't forget to click subscribe see all my future videos as well so here's a little leaf pendant that I bought that I'm going to be using and then I'm going to just set that on a this is actually a little um, mailing thing that I got in a box but <laughs> um, what's the word like a packing slip there you go that had the sticker backing on it so I just got rid of the packing slip and kept the sticker portion of it and with black acrylic I'm going to start sculpting my beetle the reason I have the pendant set right next to it is because that kind of helps you make make sure that your sizing is appropriate because if you don't have it right next to it all of a sudden you're going to be like wow my beetle is huge or you're going to look at it and it's like wow he's so tiny you rarely see him so if you have it right next to it and you're kind of working so you can look back and forth it gives you a nice little reference so start sculpting out your beetle so this beetle i wanted him to have that really nice rhinoceros um horn coming out the front of his face so i'm going to be sculpting that right now i've never made a 3d beetle that has that so it's kind of my excitement. I've made several 3D beetles. I have a like of insects. So if you guys are curious, I've done some nails with them. I've also did a, I've also done a painting and I'll put links to any beetle themed video in the description box below. So if you are as um insect enthralled as I am, definitely check those out. I think they're pretty adorable. And so then, after I've got my little beetle started, I'm going to begin I for his legs, as far as this portion of it goes, the only part I sculpted is the very, very top segment. So just like the little shoulder, kind of, if you want to think of it that way, of each leg. That's the only part that's done in acrylic. Everything else is thread. So just do that little nub of a leg. This is just the start of the legs and kind of helps you space them out later. That's it. So then I'm going to be adding more acrylic over every little section of my beetle. The reason I did that first layer, that's just like the kind of like the outline you're just starting it out you're just basing it out so that as you start adding the 3d portions and you start getting the little details in there you already have it so you know what goes where so then um when you're working on his back beetles have they've got this little triangle so there's the top section of their back and then there's a little triangle and then there's their wing covers so here's a little triangle so sculpt each of these sections separately so that they definitely have that 3d and try to keep your acrylic nice and rounded and almost marshmallowy looking so it's not I don't know how to I don't know how to articulate what I'm trying to say but you want to keep it nice and soft looking but really smooth so just keep every so I'm doing each section don't like over pat them you don't want the brush marks in there you just want to keep every section um, to itself separated and just kind of rounded and soft as far as the lines go so now we've got so the back is in four sections there's that top portion that's right by the, the um, upper two legs and then a little triangle and then the two wing covers so now I'm going to be taking some no wipe gel top coat and I'm going to be painting different sections of my beetle and I ended up using I think it's four colors of peacock powder so that's a duochrome powder that has a holographic sheen in certain lights which is absolutely gorgeous so I'm just gonna be grabbing different colors and just doing little sections at a time so the first section I did was with like a bronzy reddish gold color so that's the first one and then I'm gonna go and I'm going to take and just remove some of that dust so after I have that on I just kind of dust it off so there's not excess more no wipe gel top coat paint it in the next area just kind of keep filling it in adding section by section after this part you have the gel top coat where you want it go ahead and cure it grab a different color this time it's more of like a fuchsia purple pink and burnish that into the next layer of gel top coat that you have same process remove the dust grab more top coat and keep doing this until it's filled in and if you get it where you have you've used all four colors and it's not filled in yet just go back and fill in with whatever colors you're missing so just paint in the rest of it and then fill it in it's fine you can go back and do however many colors you want I kind of had all of my peacock powders laid out and I just grabbed the ones I thought were right for the moment so just keep adding it and then I added green um the green I like the best for a beetle usually when you think of beetles green is kind of the color that just sort of sticks out in your head so I wanted to make sure there was a lot of the green on there and so then once you have your beetle entirely filled in and he's all covered up with the gel color, then with the next you're just going to take some black paint and you're going to want to define 
all of the different segments that you sculpted originally, once you have all of that peacock powder on there, they kind of get lost and you can't see them as well as I would like you to be able to. So just go through with a black paint and add little tiny lines and then apply a layer of gel sealer over the top of your entire beetle and cure it. So now I'm going to be cutting two long pieces of green thread and tying them together right in the center. So you've got a nice little four string X basically is what you have. So you have you have your X and then grab three of these strings and hold them so that three are on one side and one is on the other and put glue over the over the knot and kind of pinch that together with the tweezers you don't care about. So you have three strings coming out one side and one string coming out the other side. After that's done, the glue should help kind of hold those three together. Then apply some gel top coat over the top of your three stringed side and set that on a nail form backing. So then apply it to, you need to make six legs. So there's the first two and just keep applying the gel top coat. And after you have it to where there's gel top coat on all six legs, cure it. And then once it's done curing, take it out and you can apply some of that dual chrome powder over the thread. Once you've done that to all six legs, glue them to your beetle. So you want the thicker part, the three string side to be coming out of that little leg spot that we created. So the three string part is where it's the thicker portion of the leg. So you have the little shoulder that we sculpted out of acrylic, then a thicker portion of the leg with a um, with the three strings and then the thinner portion of the leg with the one string. So you've got a lot of different definition in the legs that would be really hard to sculpt with acrylic, especially those skinny little thin pieces. But with thread, you can really make them and do that really easily. And they're not delicate because it's thread and it's durable and it will hold up. So that's the kind of cool thing. That's the making this three string, one string thing is the new part, the new beetle element I haven't done before. So I was really happy with the way that turned out. So then as you're going along, just take your six legs and glue them in place. As you can see, I did trim off because a lot of my legs were a bit, a bit too long. So just trim them off. You can use a nice little scissors for that and then glue them in place. The first set of legs faces forward. So it goes towards his head. And then the second set, the second two sets of legs go back towards his butt. So his legs don't all go just straight out. They all kind of go in their own little direction there. So after you have all of the legs glued on, take some clear acrylic and just sort of add a layer over the bottom of your beetle. So you're covering up all of those little leg ends that you don't really need to see and you're making it a lot stronger and you're adding just a lot. That clear of clear acrylic is super important. It's not something that you see. It's more just for the hidden element of strength and stability on your necklace. And then take and make a little pedestal for the beetle to sit up on with clear acrylics, so like a little nub, just in the bottom in the center of your beetle. That's it, pretty easy. The taller you make it, the farther away from the leaf he will sit. So just consider that and make it however far off the leaf you want it. Then glue that little nub to your leaf wherever you'd like it on there. I want mine smack dab in the middle, but I wanted the beetle a little bit tilted to the side. And then add some clear acrylic to the underside of your leaf if your leaf has these little holes in it like mine does, because then that'll go through the leaf and kind of wrap around those little leaf bits and really hold it on tight. So then figure out where you want all of your little legs to be and then glue them in place with nail glue. So the some of the legs will sit on the outside of your leaf. I guess depending on how big your beetle is and how big your leaf is, this may change how this goes. But And some of the legs will pull through the holes in the leaf and glue in to the little segments between all those little holes. This leaf pendant that I found, when as soon as I saw it, I was looking, I was like, oh, that is so cool. I absolutely fell in love with it. It's gorgeous. And I bought it at Michael's a couple months ago and I'm pretty sure they still have them, but it's amazing. And it's just, it's, yeah, I highly recommend if you guys like this, even if you just like the leaf, go find one because they're not that expensive. I think they're like $5 and they're just gorgeous. I guess $5 if you use a coupon, which I always do. But anyways, pull the legs through, glue them in place with nail glue. Nail glue is a horrible substance, but unfortunately necessary in so very many circumstances. But just keep working on your legs. And if you do have them where they pull through, it's perfectly fine to glue them wherever they, wherever they lie. So just kind of look at, pay closer attention to where you want your legs to be holding on and less to where it is convenient because you can kind of work it out no matter what. After you have all of your legs glued in place, just take and trim off the excess and then take some builder gel and cap the ends of each foot just to really make sure that they're going to be held in place. And they're not going to go anywhere. You really want to kind of cover them up because that nail glue is a temporary hold and you need something stronger on there so that they don't pop off. After that's done, apply gel sealer over the top of the whole leg. So we never put any sort of top coat on top of that peacock powder that's on the thigh portion of the leg. So you do need to go all the way up the leg and all the way down. 
And that is it. I hope you guys like this pendant as much as I do. I think it's adorable. And please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I would love to see them. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!